For the longest time I've been wondering why does the rand function return not the entire 32-bit state but throws away the 16 lowermost bits. So these guys basically. I performed a simple experiment. I said I want to call the rand function 60 times and use it as a coin flip. So I want a sequence of zeros and ones and if I start the program then indeed I get a sequence of pseudo random zeros and ones and if I start the program again then I get um, a different sequence. Okay so now let's simply get rid of the shift or simply shift by zero that should be a no-op and see if we observe any difference. Yeah and indeed that doesn't look random anymore. <laughs> zero one zero one zero one zero one that's not very random if we do it again one zero one zero one zero one zero very pred predictable. Why is this? So the update to our state, how does that work? So we multiply by some odd constant and then we add some odd constant. And if the state happens to be odd, then multiplying by, by an odd number um, leaves it odd and then adding an odd number makes it even. So we go from odd to even. And if it's even and if we multiply by an odd number, then it stays even. And then if we add an odd number, then it gets um, odd. <laughs> and that's why we flip between odd and even and modulo 2 only looks at the lowermost bit here um, or tells us if we are odd or even. That's <laughs> why we get this perfectly predictable result. And that works for every power of 2. So if, if we say um, modulo 4, then we look at the last two bits and then we can observe a periodicity of 4. So 3, 2, 1, 0 repeats over and over and over again. And if we do it with 8, for example, maybe I can still see that. Uh, let's start with the 0. Yeah, so this sequence repeats over and over and over again. And of course, we don't want that. <laughs> we want the periodicity to be longer than 2 or 4 or 8. Okay, and then does that doesn't only happen for powers of 2. For example, if we want to simulate um, a dice roll, then we don't see a periodicity that's obvious, but we see... <laughs> a hidden periodic periodicity of two. So for example, here we see an even number and an odd number, even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, and so on. And no dice would perform this way. <laughs> okay, so as soon as you have an even number here, you're basically screwed. Okay, so that's why it makes sense to throw away these bits, then our periodicity goes up to 2 to the 17, that's more than 100,000, and then you shouldn't be able to observe these patterns. Okay, and just while we're at it, um, why do we uh, <laughs> have this assignment state equals time of zero, or usually in normal programs you would write that as srand time zero. If we leave that out and look at the coin flips again, then we get um, 0, 1, 0, and then these five ones, try to remember them. And if we start the program again, here are the five ones again. And if we start it again, here are the five ones again. So we definitely want to start the random number state in a different state each time we start the program. And as, as long as we don't start it multiple times a second, um, we should be golden. Okay, don't do this multiple times a second, so especially don't um, call srand before every call to rand. If we do that, we reset the random generator every time. So here we had a new second in my comp computer clock, uh, then it was never in this run, then it was here, uh, then it was never again. Yeah, so that's, uh, now it's here, so that's not random at all. <laughs> so you really don't want to do this. The uh, accepted idiom is to say call srn time zero once at the beginning of main and then you get um, a different sequence of random numbers every time with a periodicity of 131,000 basically. <laughs>